I've been shooting with the original Fujifilm X100 for the last three weeks now. And in today's video, I'm gonna share with you my experience and thoughts and let you know if I think this 10 year old camera is still worth buying today. Stick around. everybody, my name is Jared and I am a professional photographer, videographer, who has been shooting on Fujifilm for, I don't know, over six years now. In fact, I have a deep love connection with the Fuji X100 line of cameras because it is my very first Fuji camera I ever had was the Fujifilm X100F. You see, at the time I was just a videographer and I was looking at Fujifilm for the X-T3, which had just come out. It had incredible video features and I wanted to use a camera that was a little different than all the Sony videographers that were around me. So I was looking at the X-T3, I ordered it. And when I did, I was impulsive and I ordered an X-100F as well. And I fell in love with that camera. I was not a photographer. I had no goals of becoming a photographer. Everything changed when I bought that camera, and that's why the X100 line is so special to me. And I wanted to bring you this video today because if, if you've been on the camera internet, you know that Fujifilm X100V, which I have right here, is just going viral everywhere. For whatever reason, I can't get any of my TikToks to hit the algorithm, but either way, I'm having a ton of fun making those videos around this camera, and I love seeing your videos that you're making surrounding this camera. I bought the original X100V the day it came out, and I've had so much fun shooting with it every day. I had a friend reach out to me wondering what camera I was using and where he could pick one up, only to find out they were sold out everywhere and he couldn't find them used. So that led me to recommending one of the older lines of the Fujifilm X100 series. That is when I borrowed this original X100 from a friend of mine. Been using it for three weeks now. <laughs> Love it. Also really frustrated in this borderline hate, but that's why we're bringing you this video today. So this beautiful little camera has a lot of history to it. It came out over 10 years ago. It has a 16 megapixel sensor. The menu system is nothing that I'm used to at all. However, I have found myself really enjoying it, using it. A few of the difficult things to adjust for me were the batteries. Folks, they are small, <laughs> even smaller than the ones in the X100V, which these batteries aren't very good. Well, these are a whole lot worse. So if you're gonna pick up one of these, make sure you buy some extra batteries. Other little annoyances have been uh, the focus point and figuring out how to navigate that. You know, we have a joystick here on a, the newer X100s and you just move that around for the focus point, boom, line it up, compose it, get the focus point in the right place, snap the photo. This one, it's, it's not so easy to just move <laughs> move the focus point. On this camera, it's set up to go into the AF button here on the side, and then on the D-pad, you can go and move the focus point. Little nuisances like that can cause you to miss your shot, especially depending on what you're shooting. And a lot of people are using these cameras to shoot friends and family in little candid moments. And when you're shooting candid moments, you wanna be ready to shoot them when they come. You don't want to be fumbling around to try to get the focus. I won't blame all that on the camera, just a little bit of difficulty in the user error department, but the good. It's just been fun. It's just been fun to pull this camera out, to shoot with something that I'm very familiar with, but also feel like I'm holding a completely different tool in my hand. But the pros have just been what I love about all my Fujifilm X100 cameras, and that is it's just fun to shoot with. You don't have to overcomplicate uh, the shot. You don't see something and think, oh, I need to change this to a 50 millimeter shot. Oh, ooh, that would look good at 200. No, you have what you have, you compose it, and you just push that button. You are slightly limited on some of the film recipe options that you have on like the newer X100 cameras, but there's plenty out there for this camera. You just gotta find those and just have fun experimenting with it. Once you have the basics down and your film recipe in and your autofocus settings figured out, you're ready to roll. It was also nice having the little D-pad back. Man, I missed having that. They took it off of the X100V and I loved having that on my X100F. So it's been nice having this back. You have quick button settings right there that you can get to your white balance, your drive modes. Your This has a macro mode, mm -hmm. uh, a flash, 
all that right here on the back of the camera, really easy to get to. I really wanted to take a moment and just share with you how I've been using this camera for the last three weeks, and it's how I use all of my X100 cameras, and that is keeping it in my pocket and taking it out with me, whether I'm meeting up with friends or going out with my family. We live here in beautiful Central Florida, and we go to Disney, and I can take this camera with me and get beautiful shots when I'm at the park or of my kids. We also live here in Cocoa Beach, so our family's at the beach a lot, whether we're surfing or just hanging out and using it here, getting shots of my family. Just, just, just having fun creating memories and capturing those on this camera. These are also great behind the scenes cameras. As a professional content creator, when I'm working with businesses and their customers, sometimes when I pull out my big Fujifilm camera with the battery grip and a longer lens on it, it's intimidating, it's scary. I've never had anybody intimidated or scared when I pull out an X100 camera. They're great for shooting behind the scenes content. Whether you're a videographer or you're a business owner, great, great, great tool. You can set this thing pretty much on aperture priority and just give it to an intern or a second shooter or somebody that you're training or somebody that is comfortable with the camera and just let them fire. They can focus on their composition, capturing the moment, and then you have great behind the scenes content that you can share for your company whenever you need to. Now, before I give you my recommendation on whether you should buy this or not, let's actually look at what it costs. And I've tried to buy one of these on eBay for the last several weeks. I was missing out on the bidding. A camera like this, I wouldn't want to spend over $400 on. It's just, it's, it's too old. But I do want one for my collection as a beloved Fujifilm photographer, lover of the brand. I want to collect the, I want to collect the X100 line. So I've been trying to buy one and I keep losing out. And it's because this one is so popular right now. This is only like, this retails for new under $1,300. And they're going on eBay right now for over two grand. The X100F, which was my first one that I loved, is going over for over $700. I just lost out on another X100F that went for over $1,000. Ridiculous. And while I keep losing the bid on this, one of these just sold for $700 on eBay. So there's a few things to think about. I'm gonna wait a little bit, maybe wait till the summer as the hype dies down. There are talks of Fujifilm maybe releasing a new X100 line before the end of the year. And that'll help some of the, the hype dive down. One thing that I've noticed online from these X100 cameras, they are beat up. Yes, they're old, but they're treated the way probably I treat this thing. And this does not look new by, by any means. It's all dinged up. So when I'm seeing these online, they're not just used. They, a lot of the ones that aren't going for $700 are used and abused, and it's just a little discouraging. But it's something to be aware of if you're hoping to buy this camera. They are used. These are everyday cameras that people throw in their camera bags, throw in their pockets. They're used, and hopefully that's the same reason you're gonna buy this camera. So a little wear and tear is okay, but if you can use it ahead of time, just check the dials, check that aperture ring, see how the shutter, all the little tactile buttons, how they're operating. How's the shutter? Does it stick or does it respond really, really well? Those are all good signs that it's a camera in good shape. So should you buy this camera in 2023? If you want to, I can tell you what I'm gonna do and I'm gonna keep hunting on eBay. Hopefully I can get one before the summer. I would love to add one of these to my collection. And it's just a it's just a great camera. Maybe you're new to Fujifilm, you see the hype and you wanna know why is everybody like so obsessed with it? It's because they make really great cameras. The colors are great, they're fun to use, they're beautiful to look at. They just make you wanna go out and create photography. So if you wanna join the Fuji gang, but you don't have the budget for the X100V, consider getting one of the older models. Maybe the X100 if you like that history and character. The X100F is a great option as it has some of the newer features, more similar to the X100V, and you can't go wrong. At the end of the day, a good photographer with a bad camera, still a good photographer. Thank you guys so much for watching with all the videos you could be watching on the internet. The fact that you took time out of your day to watch this video, I so greatly, greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions about Fujifilm cameras, photography, videography, or questions about accessories, maybe you wanna know what does this camera look like when it actually shoots video? Well, we've done a video on that, or you can comment down below. I'm here to help you. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Peace.